Guys, I wanted to give a bit of an update on where I stand with my flyboardless head project that I've been working on for a while and made up a new one in the past couple of days. Um, what I've ended up with at this point, um, as you can see here, is it's kind of a cross between the Stay True head that uh, WoW Hobbies is selling for the 4G6, which I'll show you here. I've got it on my flyboard heli. Okay, and essentially, um, you can see it on uh, Wow Hobby's site, I believe uh, they've got it still. Oh, And um, it works really well in a flybard application. I've got a two-cell configuration on this one, and um, I have to say it's still, to me, the most realistic performing machine um, you know, fly bars or fly bars, and other than putting in a micro beast type setup, which gets a bit pricey, uh, the performance, as uh, we saw in the video that Manny put out last week and DK Fuji, still the best way to go, uh, in their opinion, and I think so as well. Um, my fly barless setups, what you can see here's the stock uh, M120, and I'll focus in on the stock setup. And um, what you'll see about it, okay, it's the same as the V120, essentially. The only difference is the shaft is a bit longer. But the thing is, even with the micro heli washout that I've got on there, um, what you'll notice, if I play with it, is the amount of slop in the phasing that develops. Let me see if I can focus in a little better there. Look at the slop as I play with it. And that slop that's kind of added up in the plastic, in the joints, mostly in the washout arms. Okay, and there's not a hell of a lot you can do about that. Uh, the micro heli um, even have bearings in there compared to the standard Wakara setup that just has bushings and flies apart at will, basically, or on demand. Um, the setup that Heliworks has and that I've created here which is kind of a hybrid um, you'll see I'll try and see if there's any I can just barely if I really push hard create a bit of play there and um, I've been using these links for a while and they're I could probably they could probably be replaced. Uh, they've developed a bit of a gap there. But what you'll see on my newest head, I drilled two holes and put in two one millimeter pieces of uh, carbon fiber rod, which is essentially, for all of us Warkara guys, um, the one millimeter piece here that slides through and holds the uh, servo holder in place. That's just a one millimeter piece of carbon fiber. I had a couple pieces lying around. You can pick it up real dirt cheap. Um, now, I went the most complex route and uh, created my own head from scratch using some uh, 7075 aircraft grade aluminum, bar stock, and uh, I've got the luxury of having my own lathe, which is a hobby unto itself, and uh, my new milling setup that I got. And for anyone that's uh, not familiar with what a milling machine does, it's um, basically three axes, so you've got hand wheels and you move the table uh, side to side the head moves up and down and uh, then I've got a, a bunch of attachments rotary tables and such which allows me to do some accurate work so it's it's not something that the do-it-yourselfer is going to do unless you're really into this kind of stuff but what you can do and works almost equally as well is a mod on the plastic head parts so what you'll see here um, move these hellies out of the way. This is the original head um, that I had set up. Um, I don't want to take the credit for it because, uh, and I don't know how to pronounce his name, Zeitkenspenst, I believe, but I have a link on the, on my post there to his blog. And essentially what you do is you take a plastic head, the stock plastic uh, flybar head, which... I've got right here and what you see that I've done is I filled uh, the center of it with some JB Weld. JB Weld you can get at any local do-it-yourself store 
for a few bucks, and it's just two component epoxy. You fill that in just to make it solid, and that steel rod going through it is just a piece of fly bar from the 4G6. Again, you can just use that one millimeter carbon fiber piece too if you really want. Um, stage two, what I uh, took af did after that, oh, by the way, you can also do it uh, with the aluminum 4G6 head, just fill the center. Um, and uh, what I did next was I had my original stay true head that I had on my 4G6 and I went and filled it with epoxy um, JB Weld and put the fly bar rod through it and this is what I'd been using in my heli up until a couple days ago and just drilled a hole and put the fly bar rod through it and um, it works basically is really well uh, but if you want to do an easy easy way that really works well uh, also without getting too complex and everything is with the stock plastic head um, as you can see here and the stock plastic grips you'll see what I've added on to the grips there I'll try and get this thing to focus okay I just screwed on a couple of the ball links and those spacers um, uh, before the ball links are just the spacers that go um, in between the blade grips and the head on the uh, spindle, just the stock um, aluminum spacers. And that allows it to basically be perfectly in phase. It lines up, if you see that, if I hold it at 90 degrees here, you'll see it lines up perfectly in phase, okay, at 90 degrees. So this plastic head configuration really works well. There's nothing more you need to do than that, and it will get you working better than the stock V120 setup. Um, one thing I will caution you, though, if you are going to go and convert a 4G6 to fly barless and just put in the RX2610 V version 2, don't use the standard swash. If you look at the standard swash, and this is a micro heli swash for the 4G6, the spacing of the balls on the inner swash plate is a lot longer than the swash plate okay, for the V120. Now, here's the micro heli swash plate for the V120. Look at the inner four balls on the swash compared to the outer three where the servo arms attached to. Okay, so that's a mechanical gain, basically, a dry, uh, so that the dry roll needs to know. Um, and so if you use the stock 4G6 swash plate, okay, again, look at the difference, how close the inner swash balls are to the outer ones. That's a lot of mechanical gain, uh, mechanical advantage, basically. So what that translates to is uh, for a few degrees of input, you get a few degrees of output, almost a one-to-one. -one. It's, it's less than one-to-one, -one, but um, with the fly barless setup, you have a lot more resolution, meaning... If you put in, let's say, five degrees of input, you only get out a couple of degrees. So it makes the flybars controller a lot more accurate. And you need that. And uh, as you, if you get into any larger flybarless birds, and especially with the micro beast setup, it, it becomes very critical um, that that mechanical gain is set properly. And you can also play with the links on the servo horns of the cyclic servos to do the same thing, moving the ball in. Anyway, that's a bit of a roundup on fly barless heads in general. Uh, feel free to post any questions. If there's anything I can help you with, I'd love to be of service. Thanks a lot, guys.